Well, good evening, everyone. Pray that you all are doing well. Pray you got your nap in this afternoon. It's good to see you uh, for Sunday night service. And uh, we praise the Lord for the good service we had this morning. Amen. And uh, looking forward to having a wonderful time tonight. Uh, just by way of announcements, um, Pope Baptist Association Fall Meeting on Thursday the 26th at 7 p.m. at Packlet Baptist Church. So messengers heed to that. Um, all of you senior adults that signed up to go on uh, the trip up to the Indian Village, uh, it's going to be Saturday the 28th, leaving at 9 a.m. So we pray you all have a wonderful time uh, with that trip. And then on Sunday the 29th, next Sunday, it's Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Um, I'm honored and privileged to be your pastor for the past almost four years now. And so we praise the Lord for all that he has done, and uh, I'm looking forward to what he's going to do. And so with that being said, we'll have a meal following following service and uh, the church is going to provide the fried chicken everybody else bring the sides desserts and the drinks and we won't have any evening service next sunday night saturday november the 4th at the sunnyview community house they're going to have a thanksgiving meal um, at three o'clock and it's ten dollars a plate so if you'd like to be a part of that uh, you head on up there on saturday november the 4th sunday november the 5th daylight savings time uh, ends so we're going to fall back uh, there on that Sunday but on Sunday night we're going to have an Operation Christmas Child packing party down in the fellowship hall and so you come and be a part of that we won't have our regular Sunday evening service in here we'll all just meet downstairs in the fellowship hall and have a wonderful time uh, fellowshipping and packing shoe boxes together and that will be at six o'clock Monday, November the 6th, uh, all ladies are welcome to attend the Sister Chicks for Christ event at Isothermal Community College in Forest City. Uh, this is a free event, so seating is going to be limited. Uh, ladies are going to meet at the church at 3.30, uh, go by and get something to eat at Chick-fil-A, and then head to the event as it starts at 6 o'clock. So you ladies heed to that announcement. Saturday, November the 11th, it will be Veterans Day, and we are thankful for our veterans and their service to our country and we're going to have a special men's ministry breakfast at 8 a.m that morning with a special uh, veteran speaker so men if you failed to sign up thus far go ahead and sign up uh, tonight before you leave on the sign up sheet there in the back just getting a little bit of a head count for that and we look forward to that men's ministry breakfast opportunities for you to give our ministry of the month pilgrim's pathway house of refuge thank you to everyone that has given thus far if you have failed to do so the lord lays it upon your heart just be prayerful as you give to that and we are thankful for brother wayne stafford and pilgrim's way baptist church and the work that they do through the house of refuge for those men and uh, giving them the gospel every single day uh, you can also give to the renovation project We're almost done with phase one um, here at the church and when the lord provides the funds we'll get started with phase two and uh, we praise the lord for all that's been done around the house of god and also you can give to Operation Christmas Child. The, uh, the shoebox items that they ask that you bring for the month of October are crayons and coloring books. We appreciate everybody giving throughout the year to Operation Christmas Child. And if you are interested in serving on the security team, uh, please see Brother Jeremy Orr about that. Uh, they're in need of some folks uh, willing to volunteer their time to keep us all safe here. And we praise the Lord for those men and ladies that do that already. Well, let's pray. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask Him to bless our time together tonight. Then Brother Michael's going to come. Going to be a little different tonight. Going to have one congregational hymn. Then we're going to have three choir songs. So a little bit different, but I like it. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to come to your house and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. God, we thank you for the service that we had this morning. We ask your blessing upon our time together tonight. Now, all is vain unless the spirit of the Holy One comes down. So, God, we ask that you'd meet with us in a special way tonight. Um, be with all the songs that are sung. And, God, be with the preaching time as well. God, would you bless each one that made their way out tonight. Bless the ones that could not be here for whatever reason that may be. And may everything that's said and done in this place honor and glorify your name and your name alone. First, in the name of Jesus, that we pray and all God's people say it. If y'all want to sing more than one song, y'all can come up here and help us. <laughs> Page 151 in the church hymnal. Praise him, praise him. As we stand. <laughs> he 
Y'all come and join us.
Curse the Lord and die, he said, Job. Curse the Lord and die, she said, No, I'll not turn my back on him now. My vows were made for good or bad, and he's been the best friend I've ever had, and I'll not turn my back on him. said bless the name of the Lord friends and family houses and land God holds all things in his hands and I'll not turn my back Shake hands.
hands as the choir comes down. All God's people say it. Well, I'll tell you this tonight because it's good for God's people to laugh. Amen. Uh, so you probably just saw me step out, and uh, no, I, I love the song, and, and nothing nothing was bothering me. Um, I keep my phone in my back pocket now when when I'm up here. I try I do my best to try to keep track of my steps, and I've been known to walk a little bit while I'm preaching, and I'm like I'm losing all these steps that I take. Uh, by keeping my phone in my office, so I keep it in my back pocket. And usually some people will text. I'm in some group text messages that people don't realize I'm in church, but 98% of the people that I know in my life know that at 6 o'clock on Sunday evening I'm, I'm in church. Well, all of a sudden my phone starts ringing, and I can feel it in my back pocket, and I reach back there, and it's my mother-in-law that's calling me. And, you know, her husband just passed away yesterday, and all the family is over there with her and I'm like did something just happen to my wife did something just happen to one of my kids did something just happen to her mother and so that's why I stepped out to go and answer the phone and to find out if something was wrong I answered it and it was Cooper <laughs> and uh, and so he he said I just wanted to see how things are going and let you know how I hope things go well at church tonight dad I appreciate it son thank you so much I, I really I really do appreciate that so uh, there, there is your, there's your little bit of laughter for tonight. And uh, I don't know if you needed it or not, but I sure did. So that, that worked out well uh, for me tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, we're going to continue through the Sermon on the Mount tonight together. Y'all pray for Cooper because if my wife has gotten a hold of him as of this moment, he needs all the prayers that he can get probably at this moment. <laughs> but it'll be all right. Matthew chapter 6 tonight, we're going to be in verse 13, but we're just going to read part of the verse and dive in to the thought that I believe God would have for us tonight as we continue um, through the Sermon on the Mount together. Um, so Matthew chapter 6, we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Again, we're just going to read the first part of the verse tonight, so you won't have to stand very long at all, but if you found your place and you will and able, would you stand reverence to the reading of the Word of God? Uh, Matthew chapter 6, and we're just going to read the beginning part of verse 13. The Bible says this, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And may God bless the reading and the preaching of His Word tonight. Uh, thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Uh, as we look tonight, we are going to continue through the Sermon on the Mount. And we have been doing this over the past few Sunday nights now for the past few months. And we know when it comes to the Sermon on the Mount that the Lord Jesus Christ, He is now preaching and teaching to the multitude. You don't have much pinned down prior to Matthew chapter 5 of the Lord Jesus Christ and His speaking. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ is now taking His place and He is now preaching and teaching to the multitudes. Why he would start with the Beatitudes and they always start with blessed are and they always end with a promise. Christ would then move on to the topics of salt and light. I agree with the commentators that those are for the believer because it's really, really hard to be salty and to be the light of the world if the capital L light has not taken up residence in your life. 
So I believe those are for the believer tonight. Christ would move on to preach and teach concerning the law and righteousness. He said, I did not come to destroy the law, but I did come to fulfill it. He spoke of righteousness and that would have resonated with the multitude that he was preaching to because at this very time he's preaching and teaching to people who are trusting in their own good deeds, they're trusting in their own righteousness to merit them eternal life. They are trusting in their good works. They're trusting in their ability to follow the law. That is what they're all about in their life. And Christ would say this, Your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees if you're going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is very key noted that righteousness is not an attribute, but it is a person. And His name is Jesus Christ. Going back to the law, Christ would tell them, Ye have heard it said of old time, but I say unto you, and Christ would preach and teach concerning different topics that were prominent and prevalent during that time and they're still prominent and prevalent today. Topics of murder and adultery and divorce. Why Christ would say, ye have heard it said of old time, but I say unto you, speaking of people that would take the law and take it out of context and they would just take little bits of it and they would apply it to their life and they'd leave the rest off. Doesn't that sound like today? People take a little bit of scripture and they apply it to their life and they want to drop off the rest of it and say, no, I don't want that. I just want that little snippet so I can validate my lifestyle. Why, that is exactly what the Sadducees would do. And as Christ is reaching, he's saying, you've heard it said, but I say unto you, this is how things are done. He would end chapter 5 telling them, Be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Chapter 6, he starts condemning this topic of externalism, doing the right thing on the outside but with the wrong inward motive. Christ would use two topics of prayer and the giving of alms and we would find a term that he would use here in chapter 6 and that term is hypocrite. He'd say, Do not do as the hypocrites do. Why? They were doing it just for manly reward. They were doing it just for a show. And Christ said, they have their reward. They have exactly what they are going after. But it's just a temporary reward. This life is very, very temporary. It's here for just a moment and then it's going to vanish away. They've got a temporary reward. Do it for your Father, which is in heaven. And I just want to remind you tonight, I put this in my notes. Remember, God looks upon the heart. Nothing is hidden from Him. God knows our motives. God knows the desires of our heart tonight. And so He knows if you're doing it for the right reason or for the wrong one. We have been in the Lord's Prayer now for the past few weeks. And you can find the Lord's Prayer in verses 9 through 13. And last time we were in verse 12, and as I said last week, I I believe this is probably the most difficult part of the Lord's Prayer. It's really, really hard for Baptists, that whole forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's very, very hard because it is natural for us to be prideful individuals. We hold on to things. One of the things I think a lot of Baptist churches put down as qualification to get in is you've got to have some bitterness in your heart somewhere. Because it seems like people harbor bitterness and they hold on to it. And Baptist churches are just full of it. But if we're going to look more like Jesus, we're going to have to forgive because we've been forgiven. (laughs) And when we realize the great debt that we owed and we realize the forgiveness that was granted to us, it ought to make us more willing to forgive others when they trespass against us. Because nobody has trespassed against us like we've trespassed against a thrice holy God (laughs) let's look at our text tonight we're just going to be in the beginning part of the verse the Bible says and lead us not into temptation lead us not notice that word lead that entails that someone is leading and someone is following (laughs) there is a thing that is in our preschools and also and probably in your kindergarten maybe first second grade classes There's always that distinction and my kids were always excited when they came home from 
preschool and they got to be the line leader for the day. That was always a big deal. I got to be the line leader today, Daddy. And I said, well, what does that entail? Well, that means every time we lined up to go somewhere, I got to be in the front. And that was a big deal to them. Friend, it ought to be a big deal to us who is leading us. Who is leading us? Either God is leading you or you're leading yourself. <laughs> you're either living for God or you're living for yourself. Christ here says, and lead us not into temptation. It is in telling there that we're not supposed to be leading, we're not supposed to be driving, but rather we are supposed to be following after the things of God. Now, some of you are already picking up and saying, Preacher, that doesn't make much sense to me because you just said I'm supposed to be following after the things of God, and it says here, lead us not into temptation. Does that mean that God is going to lead me into sin? Well, I want to remind you about God tonight. He is holy, He is true, He is righteous, and He is pure. He has no error in Him at all. James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth He any man. You say, preacher, that, that seems like it contradicts itself. God does not lead to temptation, but He does allow testing to come up in our lives. Can I use an analogy with you tonight? If you had someone who was brought out of alcohol abuse, I mean addicted to alcohol, and a constant, frequent abuser of alcohol, and brought up out of it, okay, born again, God is not going to lead them to the bar on Saturday night. He's not. He's not going to lead them to the bar on Saturday night. But I can tell you what He will do. He will allow opportunity for somebody in a social gathering or like I have encountered a lot on a golf course. Hey, brother, would you like a beer today? No, thank you. I'm good. Testing of your faith. That's a test. He's not leading you, but He's allowing that to come into your life so you can say no and that you can then promote your testimony that I don't need a beer to have a good time. <laughs> I don't need... You fill in X, Y, and Z. Okay, Any of these things that the world has to offer, God's not going to lead you to it, but He is going to allow the testing of your faith, and for you to be able to say, no, I belong to Him, and I don't desire that anymore. For us as Christians, we should desire that we avoid sin. Avoid sin in our life. We should not be toying with it. We should not desire to just be around the fringe of it. It should be a desire for the child of God that we be avoiding ridden of sin, not even coming in contact with it. Why? Because sin doesn't make us look like Jesus. Sin doesn't make us look like Jesus. But we live in a sin-stricken world, do we not? These teenagers and these kids, us that are a little bit older, we can remember a day and time where it seemed like we had to go look for trouble. They don't have to look for it. Trouble comes and finds them with a click of a button on the internet, with the turn on, with the, just the turn of the power button on the television. I mean, with those little bitty devices that we hold in our hands, it seems like trouble can find them very, very quickly. When I was a youth pastor. I was amazed at what my middle schoolers were hearing about and what I was having talks with parents about of middle school age children that I didn't hear about and I didn't have to encounter until I was in college. It amazed me how it has started to just continue on a downward spiral. And now I look at my children and how quickly they're growing up and I'm thinking to myself, 
my goodness, how, how much more do we have to pray a hedge about our children and our grandchildren because the devil wants our children and our grandchildren. And the devil wants our testimony. How does he do that? He gets us to fall into sin and ruin our testimony. I want to remind you tonight, child of God, if you're blood-bought and redeemed, this is the only life that the devil has to mess with you. This is it. So why would we expect not to get his best shot in this life, like James said, it's just a vapor, a mist, it's here for just one moment, then it vanishes away. But when we take our last breath here, friend, I'm not going to be laying up here dead in a casket. I'm going to be as alive as I've ever been. A place of no more sin, no more sorrow, no more troubles, no more temptation. I'm going to be sitting at his feet, worshiping him for all eternity. The devil's only got this life, and he'd love nothing more than to ruin the testimony of a preacher, of a preacher's wife, of a deacon. A Sunday school teacher. Let me just make it personal. A Christian mom and daddy. A Christian teenager. A Christian child. He would love nothing more than to ruin the testimony. Why? Because a ruined testimony speaks volumes to a lost and dying world and say, well, obviously Jesus isn't good enough. <laughs> obviously Jesus doesn't work. <laughs> Friend, I'm here to tell you. We're going to go through testing. We're going to go through trials. God's not going to lead you straight into sin. But He will allow testing and things to come up in your life. Can we look at Job for just a minute? God allowed those things to come into his life to test his faith. His wife said, curse God and die. Job wasn't even on the devil's radar until God and Satan had a conversation. By the way, this is just a side note. This is just to help you, okay? This is just a little preacher Sean nugget for tonight. There's no such thing in this day and time as a modern day Job. Job was so righteous and so close to God that the devil didn't even think about, didn't even think about messing with his life <laughs> because there was such a hedge of protection about him until God brought it up. But if you read throughout Job, Job would ask for something. This is just a little gold nugget tonight. Job would ask for a daysman. You know what a daysman is? It's a mediator. It's a medi he, he's asking. He says, is there, I don't understand. He's, Job's saying, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but I want a mediator between me and God. I, I want somebody who can come, be neutral between the both parties, and figure out why I'm going through what I'm going through in my life. Job never got a daysman. But we do. We have a daysman. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why there won't be a modern day Job with no daysman. Because we have one, as I preached this morning, who has felt things as we feel them. He was tempted in all ways just as we are, but he was yet without sin. That is the difference. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, lead us not into temptation. Again, friend, anytime we find ourselves in a season of toying with sin, getting as close to sin as we can, you'll find this. And if you've ever been in a place in your life like that, you'll find this. You put yourself there. You put yourself there. Your desires put you there. I wonder how close I can get without it just taking over my life. I, I wonder how close I can get. I wonder how much I can, I can intake before it just completely takes over my life. When you get to that point, friend, it's not of God. That's your lustful desires of your flesh taking over. But I love this word. My favorite conjunction in all the Bible. But, but, deliver us from evil. Deliver. Think about it. I put two things in my notes about deliver. Number one, 
If you are in need of being delivered or having something delivered, you can't deliver it yourself. You can't do it on your own. Somebody else has to do it. Number two, when it comes to being delivered or having something delivered, someone else takes the burden off of you. Can I use this analogy tonight? My wife loves some Amazon Prime. All right? And I'm thankful for it because there are times we get in a pinch with things around the house and that whole two-day shipping, if they, ever, if they come through on it, it works out really, really good. But here's what she does. She tracks those things. And I mean, it, she, it's like an impulse thing. She's always tracking and she's seeing where it's at and why is it going that way and when's it going to get to the house and when's it going to get to Greenville and why is it just now getting in Charlotte and why is it still there? She's watching, watching all these different things. Here's the thing. Amazon delivering whatever she orders to my house takes the burden, takes the burden off of me I don't have to go get it. I don't have to go find it. Some of you men help me preach. We ain't got to wait 10 hours in the store to try to look for it. <laughs> it can come straight to the house. And we can sit there and watch football and take care of things around the house and check our trail cameras and do all this stuff. All while the package is being delivered. It takes the burden off of us. Can I get an amen in the house? What about delivering something that you can't deliver on? Whew. There have been things in my life that I can't deliver. I can't come through. I can't do it. I am very, very limited. But somebody else sure did come through. Somebody else took it upon themselves to do it and did it well. <laughs> because if I would have had to do it, I'd have made a mess out of it. I can't help but think tonight of all the times in my life when I was going through circumstances and I was going through things only for God to send somebody into my life that had the proper expertise and the right knowledge at that moment to take care of something that I had no clue about. And I can't help but think about a spiritual sense tonight when I couldn't save myself, when I couldn't help myself, when you couldn't help yourself, you couldn't save yourself, you couldn't deliver yourself. You could not turn over a new leaf. You could not get out of the mess that you were in. That's when Jesus came by your way. And he said, I am the remedy. I am the capital D deliverer. I specialize in delivering and I'm always on time. That's our God tonight. He specializes in delivering. Hey, he'll deliver when nobody else can. And he'll take a burden off of you that you can't bear. Listen to me tonight. Deliver from evil. This is very simple, but I pray it helps you tonight. If you're being delivered from something, that means you're having to be brought to something. I can't be delivered from this amen corner because if I'm being delivered, I'm being brought away from it. Correctly? Correct? I'm being brought away from it. I'm being drawn away. I'm being picked up and carried from this amen corner. I can't, am I just going to go aimlessly? Am I just going to wander about? No. You see, there's going to be another destination that I'm going to be delivered to. I'm delivered from something, but I'm delivered to something. Friend, I'm here to tell you, God specializes in delivering from evil. For delivering from sin. But, the further away that you get from sin, who's the one that's pure, holy, and true, and righteous, and there's no flaw in Him at all? None other than our God Himself. And so the further you get 
from evil and being delivered from evil, the closer you get to Him. Friend, I'm here to tell you tonight, you're as close to God as you want to be. When it comes to you looking like Jesus, if you're blood-bought and redeemed, you're looking like Him as much as you want to. You see, we still got the free will. We still got the choice. Do we want to just be, oh, well, this is far enough. And we feel like we validate ourselves. While God's all the way over there. I don't know about you, friend, but I want to get far away from here because I've learned this. Every morning I look in the mirror, I see myself and I know who I am and God knows me better than I know myself, but I know myself pretty well. And I can tell you this, every day I need to look more like Jesus and less like Sean McKegg. And the closer that I am over here, the more I'm going to look like Sean McKegg. Now I may have a little bit of evidence of Jesus, but there are going to be times when somebody's just going to get on my last nerve. Somebody help me in the house of God. Somebody's just going to get on my last nerve. Somebody's going to push that last button and somebody's going to do this or that. And all of a sudden, I've been working on my temper and my fuse has got a couple centimeters longer, but it's still short. And all of a sudden, somebody lights that thing. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm real close to letting them have it, as we say in the South. But the more that I'm over here and the closer I get to Him, the less I desire to be over there. The more I will desire to have a pure avoidance and riddance of sin. God, I don't even want to look at it. God, I don't even want to be around it. God, I don't even want any evidence of it in my life. God, I don't even want to look at it. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to taste it. I don't want to be around it. I just want to be all about it. When He delivers us from evil, He's delivering us to Himself. God is the opposite of the evil. And I just came to remind somebody tonight. He's still a God that delivers. He's still a God that delivers. He has not changed. He has not changed. He's still delivering today. And Amazon Prime and UPS and FedEx and the great United States Post Office has nothing, nothing on me. Nothing. I have seen Amazon and UPS and FedEx and the Postal Service come through for me a few times in my life. Anybody want to raise a hand tonight for the times that they didn't come through for you? Yeah. My wife loves to send those complaints back to me. Most of the time that equals what you ladies like to call free stuff. Because you didn't get it to me when you promised you were going to get it to me. It didn't come the way that you said it was going to come. And I had made all these promises to these kids and all these things that this was going to be here at this time and you didn't get it here. So therefore you either need to give me a discount, give it to me for free, or you need to send me two of them. Amazon may let you down. UPS may let you down. FedEx may let you down. The Postal Service may let you down. But Jesus will never let you down. If we could go back to John chapter 11. Mary and Martha tell you this. You may think he's late, but he's always on time. He's always an on time God. Some of you have been praying for folks in your life. Let me tell you something. He's still capital D delivered. He's an on-time God. Some of you may wake up tomorrow and circumstances in your life and things of your life may just turn your world upside down. And you may be having the time of your life come Wednesday. Remember this. Look more like Jesus and less like you. Because that crowd, that multitude that he's preaching and teaching to, they all about me, me, me. They all about me, me, me. Jesus says no need to get her eyes off herself. And let's get her eyes on the bright holy God. That's who our focus needs to be on. <laughs> Lead us not to temptation. We ought to have a desire that we're not going to be around sin at all. But when we're tested, when our faith is put to the test, let us give an answer 
that we may glorify God and let a lost and dying world know that that's not who we are. That we've given our life to Christ. May, may as we're delivered, may we always turn to Him and look more like Him every single day. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That sounds like a promise to me. Sounds like a promise to me. And I'm glad that we've got a promise from Jesus. Let's pray together tonight to close our service. Brother Terry Gossett, will you close us in prayer tonight, brother? Grace to him, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message, Lord, we've heard, dear God, Lord, we thank you for the one we've heard this morning, Lord. Thank you for the messenger, dear God, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the one who gives it to him, dear God, most of all, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the people to read, dear God, Lord, to just touch each heart, Lord, you know what each, each heart needs, dear God, Lord. Lord, I pray for that cross, dear God, that's got these names on it, dear God. Lord, only I pray, God, that you'll just uplift them, dear God, Lord, start convicting hearts. Draw them to you, saving them for it's too late for them, God. And I pray for our, our youth, dear God, that's in there, Lord. I pray, God, that the prayer of God will be in there with them tonight, dear God, Lord. Mm-hmm. Pray, Lord, somebody in there that's the same thing. There's people out here, Lord, that need you, God. Mm-hmm. God, we all are needy people, dear God. I pray, Lord, that whatever we need, Lord, that we just ask, Lord, that you'll just give it to us, Lord. I thank you and praise you, Lord, for everything that you do. I thank you, God. <coughs> Yeah.